This is Geometry Lesson 1-3, Other Types of Geometries. To begin this lesson, I'm actually going to read from your textbook on page 19. It's the very beginning of the lesson. It goes as follows. In Lesson 1-1, one, one, a point was described as an exact location. In Lesson 1-2, a point was described as a location in the plane identified by an ordered pair of real numbers. In this lesson, you will examine two other common descriptions of points. This is important because different descriptions of points and lines serves as a foundation for different types of geometry. You were shown a picture um, painted by George Seurat. It's a pointillism painting where all the different points create a nice painting using different colors. They, those points come together to make shapes. And in this case, you see people sitting in a park on a nice summer afternoon. So in discrete geometry, we actually describe a point as a dot. In this geometry, the dot has size. Um, and if we want to describe a line in discrete geometry, that line is simply a set of dots in a row. When looking at lines in discrete geometry, we can see in this red drawing here that our lines intersect and they have a point in common. And if you look at the green lines, these are lines in synthetic geometry, and this also has a point in common. But in synthetic geometry, whenever two lines intersect, they will always intersect at one point. But in discrete geometry, that's not always the case. I wanted to have you draw an example of two discrete lines crossing in which the two lines do not share a common point. As you can see here, the points are evenly spaced, and the two lines intersect, but they don't share a point in common. So this is possible within discrete geometry. The next part of your lesson was discusses the Konigsberg bridge problem. This bridge problem is going to be used to introduce the fourth geometry that we'll be studying in this chapter called graph theory. Basically the problem starts with seven bridges and land masses. And what they've done is they tried to ask the question, can you walk around all seven bridges without retracing your steps? And in order to solve the problem, a network actually was created. The land masses became what we call nodes, and the bridges became what we call arcs. And so if you look at this problem, we try and tr walk the bridges only one time and we try to walk all bridges without retracing our steps and as you can see here I did that but I I didn't make it I didn't quite get this this last bridge here and what we say if a network is if you are able to walk on all of our arcs those are in this case what the ar the bridges were exactly one time without retracing your steps or picking up your pencil, you have what's called a traversable network. Let me just read you that definition. A network in which all the arcs may be traced exactly once without picking up the tracing instrument. When describing this network, I spoke of arcs and I spoke of nodes. In this case, the arcs were the bridges and the nodes were the land masses. When we think about those in terms of graph theory, a point is the node of a network, and a line is an arc connecting either two nodes or one node to itself. And so I want you to take a look at example one here, and I want you to uh, just simply identify how many arcs are at each of our nodes in networks one, two, and three. Stop the video to do this, and when you are finished, start the video again. The second thing I'd like you to do now is to see if you can traverse the network. Can you trace exactly once without picking up your tracing instrument and without overlapping or retracing your steps? Try that with examples one, two, and three. I'm going to try and traverse this network so you can see with my yellow highlighter, I was able to do that. I'm going to put a little S in my bright yellow highlighter here and an E where I end it. So an S where I started, an E where I ended. That didn't come out very nicely, but I think you can still read it. Let's try the next one. I'm just going to start here 
Oh, in this case, I started and ended at the same spot. Just make a little spot there. Let's try the third network. Mm, nope, that didn't work. Let me see if I can erase that. Try one more time. Maybe I'll start down here. Nope, not again. Not sure it's possible to traverse network three. Before we continue on, I want to take a look at what is an even node and an odd node. It turns out as Euler was doing his work with networks, he came to some conclusions and they involved an even node and an odd node. So an even node basically is if the number of arcs at a node is even, then er, at a node is even, and if it's an odd node, the number of arcs at a node is odd. So if we look up here, we wrote how many arcs came in. Two and three here, two, one, four, and so on. Well, Euler had some reasoning that he discovered while investigating the Konigsberg problem. When a path goes through a node, it uses two arcs. When the node in one to the node and one away from it. When a network has an odd node, it must be the starting or finishing point for a traversable path. Whenever a network has more than two odd nodes, it's not traversable. So I want you to think about why networks one and two are traversable and network three is not. Start the video again when you have had an opportunity to think about that. As we look here, we started this one at an odd node and we finished at an odd node when we retraced our steps. Now, in this case, less, or in network two, there were all even nodes and it didn't matter. I had to happen to start at F. Did anyone start at a different one? Oh, here you can see I can do it at I also. So you may start at any node and you will finish at that same node when they're all even. But if we look at three, I had trouble tracing that network. Um, and if you notice, it has more than two odd nodes, which goes against Euler's reasoning. If he says that when a network has more than two odd nodes, it's not traversable. And I think, actually I spoke, misspoke, I said it goes against it. Well, actually it supports it. We were not able to traverse this network because it has more than two odd nodes. This concludes lesson three.